thank you for coming to the talk. This is Finding Your Path. Um, I am James Richardson, and hopefully everybody's having some fun at Nest so far. Uh, just a quick run through of the, the agenda tonight. Uh, just a quick intro, let you know who I am and, and why I'm speaking with you. <laughs> uh, the purpose of the talk is not to be sort of, here's the uh, the way you should contribute as a beginner from beginning to end. It's very much sort of a coaching session um, with a hopefully a good discussion at the end. Um, we are going to go through how to contribute as a beginner, some of the things, some of the lessons learned uh, from being the intern for a long time time and sort of new to the team as as a engineer and then like i said uh hopefully a discussion at the end so some people that might be brand new some people that might be uh taking their first look at fedora and what that means uh maybe some other people that have kind of poked around irc and um don't really know kind of what the first step is in the path So who am I? Uh, in my professional background, uh, I started in the US Navy a long time ago, uh, went uh, to be a carpenter, then went into the brewing industry. And of course, it's just a natural transition to become uh, a software engineer, of course, from there. Where else did you go? Um, so in 2017, I made the change uh, to leave the brewing industry and go back to school and get my degree in computer forensics and security, which I absolutely hated, but I fell in love with software development um, and joined Red Hat as uh, the CPE intern in January of 2020. And then just recently, a couple of months ago, accepted a full-time position as a software engineer in June um, after I finished up with school. Uh, personal, um, originally from the Northeast of the United States, um, kind of in the Connecticut and Boston area, if anybody knows where that kind of is. Um, and then my wife is actually Irish. So we moved here in 2013 with the kids and just some interests, uh, huge into home brewing, love playing the guitar, mandolin, love anything to do with Tolkien, Star Wars, the Grateful Dead, hiking, running, and yeah course homebrewing anybody that is on cp is probably sick and tired of the the homebrewing stuff um the purpose of this talk so being new at anything is tough being uh starting off with anything is going to be uncomfortable you're going to feel like i have a lot of enthusiasm hopefully but i'm not sure how to um, use that enthusiasm the right way you're obviously, if you're here at Nest and you started using Fedora, you're obviously have an interest in this. So if you've gone to the extent of coming to this uh, conference, this, this virtual chat, you've obviously got an interest and you are here for a reason. This is something that was told to me when I first started. Um, and I continually tell myself, I'm here for a reason. The, if you want to call it the imposter syndrome or uh, the feeling of, God, you know, I, I'm not sure if I'm uh, smart enough or capable enough or anything like that, you are here for a reason. So always kind of hold that close that, look, if I am interested enough, I'll be able to find something within this world that I really like. Uh, as you can see from the professional background, I've had a lot of first starts. I kind of consider myself to be a professional beginner. Um, so I'll give you some tips as the, the talk goes on. Um, and everybody, no matter if they are one year in or 20 years in, everybody has started fresh. And the great thing about this community um, is everybody's willing to help. Uh, it is an amazing and a rare thing that we have with this community, whether it's with uh, the specific team that I work on at Red Hat, or when we're doing normally on a Thursday evening on an IRC, our Fedora weekly catch-ups, everybody's here to help. Everybody has been in the beginner shoes before. Uh, so hopefully with this chat, we'll kind of explore some areas of where that path starts, 
but it's definitely up to you to find out where you want to take it. And the most important thing is, and I can't stress this enough, enough, and this is for anything in life, do not give up. If you're here and you're interested and you're still not sure and you want to start working on something, but you're not sure how, or you do start working on something and um, maybe it's not going as well as you had hoped, um, the worst thing that you can do is just leave it. Giving up is never the right course of action. So contributing. Contributing to something like Fedora is a daunting prospect when you're brand new. Um, you can look at, you can start using the operating system and understand maybe some of the uh, the tools, the applications that are being used, the operating system, maybe you like front end, maybe you like database management. It is very daunting to sit at the beginning and wonder, okay, well, I kind of like front end design, but how do I begin uh, helping out? So one of the first things is if, again, if you're here and you've explored Fedora and you're going around Fedora docs, um, this is probably one of the first places you're going to land is getting started with Fedora, um, finding out who uh, this document is for, how to walk through this getting started sheet that's been made specifically for the beginner uh, and reading through everything and figuring out how to begin is going to be your first step. Any of the reading that I'm going to highlight in the next few slides are where your first step is, where your first step should be. Uh, we do a lot of how-to docs. Professionally, we call them SOPs or standard operating procedures, but there are some very gifted people that uh, have been with the team for a long time that know how to uh, contribute, know how to uh, know all the ins and outs of Fedora. And they're incredible people and they're, they're an incredible wealth of information for me. But for all of us other sort of laymen out there, we need to walk through things and figure out from somebody else who's already done it, these are the steps you should go through. This is the procedure. And this is one of them, this how-to doc, okay? So you wanna contribute, brilliant. We're thrilled to have you. Here's who, uh, here's how you go through it. This is the audience for the doc, uh, the things you should know before you join. There's all the kind of prerequisites that you should probably have done if you're already here, like simple stuff, creating a profile on fedoraproject.org. Um, so specifically what you're gonna find when you do first kind of look at contributing is Fedora infrastructure. Um, even after being an intern for about 18 months, it wasn't until recently that I really understood what it meant to uh, join the weekly meetings, what the Fedora infrastructure versus the say CentOS infrastructure or RelEng, uh what all of these things how these how these um uh, infrastructures work and how they work together and how to figure out what needs to be worked on um but this is the getting started page again all of these are there something that actually i just kind of want to take a tangent for a second because something that matt talked about at state of fedora this morning um made a lot of sense and it's something that I saw initially and saw when I was making this slide deck is it seems like there's a lot of areas that are kind of saying the same thing. A lot of docs or um, a lot of pages that you might find that are kind of saying the same thing or maybe in a different way. Um, and these are the three that I've highlighted because it's what I used when I first uh, wanted to get started on this. But something that I've had in the back of my mind is these really should be sort of condensed into one single landing page. I completely agree with it and hopefully we'll get started on it. But for infrastructure, this is where you should go. I'll link all of these in the end, at the end of this doc. So anybody that's interested can go and 
visit these links. Um, as you can see uh, on the purple, that's obviously for me going through this doc and going, okay, yep, yeah, what's the first step? Um, along with this, and I didn't highlight it here, but it's sort of uh, once you've landed here and you've, um, you've, you've started to go through this particular doc, the next step is something called Fedora Infrastructure Apprentice Program. Um, that's something that if you're already here and you're already comfortable and you're already on IRC and uh, you're starting to get the lay of the land and starting to, to have chats with people, that's that sort of evolution to all of this. So that brings us handily to IRC. What's IRC? Uh, it's, it's basically just chats, it's just basically a chat room. Um, we use what's called uh, Libero.chat now. We used to use something else and we've migrated to this. Uh, the guide that I'm showing you here, and again, I'll show you this link at the end, uh, just goes through how to set up IRC. It's uh, it's very easy. You find a client. I use HexChat because when I first started, my mentor, Stephen Cody, said, use HexChat. And I went, yeah, great. Um, but there's many of them out there, better or worse. You'll always get a good uh, argument going about which IRC client is, is everybody's favorites. Um, you create a nickname and you pop on to IRC. There's a good few channels that I'll talk about in a second um, where all of us meet and especially that Thursday weekly Fedora catch up is, is probably the most important for new people. So that prereq checklist, uh, just again, to make sure that you're doing all the right things from the start is reading through all those guides. Make sure that um, if there's any questions or after reading through it, you're still not sure, this is the next kind of few things is, is ask questions. Um, yeah, of course, create a profile on Fedora Project.org. You know, that's, that's kind of a no brainer. Um, install and configure that IRC client, make sure that you choose a good nickname and get that registered. Um, and then one of the first things that you're going to do once all of that stuff is done is during our Thursday meetings, I think the first thing once the meeting starts is, do we have any new people? And it's very relaxed. Um, it's very comfortable. You come on, tell us who you are, what you're into, what you'd like to do. Um, maybe even ask, you know, hey, listen, I've started working on this and I'm not really sure how to even push a PR or anything like that. That's totally fine. Um, I think one of the main takeaways from being a new person for so long on this team and in this community is if you are a new, new person that's got enough enthusiasm and enough drive to start working on things, everybody else on the team will meet you halfway and and will definitely help you out to to move it along whatever you wanted to work on um and just do that you introduce yourself to the community say hi say why you're here all that kind of good stuff and then you're you're pretty much nearly there um it's up to you though once you've done all those things to find out what it is that you want to work on um yeah thanks homer that's brilliant so tips from a professional beginner. This is kind of the coaching session. Um, definitely take your time. Um, there's no rush. There's no expectations. There's no, once you say hello, okay, here are the, you know, dozen things that we're going to expect you to complete by Tuesday. Um, it's not that way at all. It's very much a great, we're thrilled to have you here. Uh, what would you like to work on? Do you have any experience with anything that might be handy in, uh, working on any projects, whether it's in Fedora or anything else. Um, it doesn't necessarily, this is something I think Marie said again from um, the, the the first session this morning uh, was, it doesn't necessarily need to be technical either. Um, I can tell you by being older and not having been uh, in the world of computing and only recently kind of getting uh, into that industry, my skills would not necessarily be the best technically. And it's something that I'm continuously working on, but that doesn't mean that you can't contribute. So take your time. There's absolutely no rush. Again, find something that you like doing. Um, within this world, 
within this industry, within Fedora community, there are so many avenues to go down. There are so many different aspects to this, uh, this world that hopefully if you've, again, gotten to the point where you're here and you're attending and you're listening to this chat and you've read through those guides that hopefully you've, you've already determined that there is something that you like, but there's no point in working away on something that you're not going to enjoy or that you're not totally into. Um, cause what's the point? This is a big one. And this is something that I hand on heart struggle with a lot. Um, seek help. Um, if you get to a point where you've sort of reached the end of what you think you can do or reach the end of a project and you're not really sure where to take it, or you're looking at a part of code that you have no clue what the hell is going on, there is no point in sitting there staying stuck. I have trouble with this myself because I like to figure things out for myself. I figure I've, I've found that that's the way that I learn best. And sometimes that's good. Sometimes um, hammering through that wall and finding out why you don't know something or why you're stuck will lead to future success because you'll always be able to fall back on that and go, oh yeah, 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 I did this and it leads here and I have to do this and whatever. But if you're really stuck, don't stay stuck. There are plenty of people on a daily basis on IRC or on any of the other chats that are willing to help and are brilliant. And they're very friendly and very welcoming. Um, so if you do decide to join and become into the, or, or join into the um, Fedora Infrastructure Apprentice Program, you're not really allowed to make any mistakes. There's no big red button that you can press and completely destroy anything. Um, the community is very much a meritocracy. So the more that you work on things and the more trust uh, people have for you that you're, you start knowing what you're doing, that's the only way that you're gonna start getting permissions and getting access to, um, to work on more things. So when you first start out, you can hunt around, you have read access to everything, but you don't have write or especially execute access to anything. So um, you can find out uh, what's going on with the infrastructure. You can start looking at tickets. You can start looking at issues. You can start kind of um, figuring out from some of the more experienced people uh, what's going on and, and what they're doing. There's there's um, no problem in shadowing or peer programming. Um, I think we should do a little bit more of that, if I can be honest for a second. I think um, some of the ways that I've learned best, especially in the last couple of months, are working with some very experienced programmers and uh, it takes the mystery out of it. But yes, very much in the beginning, it's little by little. So you keep working on things, you build up your expertise, you build up your trust. Uh, people understand who you are. They've seen your name before or seen you on IRC and you start kind of building up your ability to do more and more things. Come on. This is something that um, shouldn't need to be said, but it it, it is um, being kind. You know, that's, that's a huge thing in this community um, is being welcoming, being kind. Um, I am very much an introvert. I, I don't enjoy uh, sitting and talking to people face to face. It's something that I kind of struggle with, um, but that doesn't mean that people aren't helpful and want to help. Um, sometimes it means making the first step, but we treat each other with respect in this community. Um, the fact that people come and help and want to contribute to this is an amazing thing. And it gets lost sometimes when people are busy and working on uh, working towards a deadline, but we're all part of the team. We're all part of the same team and that's what makes us better. So that can't be ignored. Um, so that's kind of the end of my presentation. Um, but so first, thanks for listening to my little spiel. Um, I hope you hope you all go out and enjoy the rest of Nest. Uh, there's links at the end of the page here uh, and my contact details if anybody wants to get in, in contact with me. But um, 
yeah so hopefully now if there's any discussions if there's any questions if anybody uh is even worse off in terms of kind of <laughs> what to do now uh then let me know and we can have a chat you got it i'm happy uh to deliver it and again if anybody um has questions or is none the wiser after that or just wants the links or wants the slide deck or anything like that um here i'll throw it into chat it is so if nothing else i guess i will leave everybody go and enjoy um the really cool 8-bit adventure adventure work thing that's pretty fun Bye everybody. Cheers. Thanks for thanks for watching.